My name is Timo Dickscheid. I'm working in, in Jülich with, uh, with Katrin Amuts. Um, I'm, a, I'm a computer scientist, not a neuroanatomist, so it's, uh, the expertise is overlapping but highly complementary here. I try to give you a, um, a first impression of what, uh, what you can do uh, with the uh, Human Brain Project tools in, uh, with respect to the, the atlases. But just to, to quickly summarize again, so the way that we look at an atlas is usually on, on the high level um, we have a definition of a coordinate space, which, is, which usually comes with an image of, of a brain in that coordinate space. Then we have a, a map, so a delineation of the coordinate space into different regions, uh, which might be more complex than just having uh, clear borders, but it's, in principle it is a map. And then we have a terminology or a taxonomy on top of that map. So basically something that tells us what are the names of these different uh, elements and how do they relate to each other. It might be hierarchy or, or whatever. Um, so that these are the three um, basic parts and Rick has already um, mentioned it. Um, and then in each in each coordinate space um, we might have different maps for sure. That's not, not different from how the Earth uh, how, we, how we are dealing with maps of the Earth, where you can have a political parcellation or something regarding climate, uh, different um, climate regions or, or, or the topography and, and, and things like that. And we also want to have a flat version of your map too, right? Yes, there is also, that is also an analogy that's true. So you might, uh, for the Earth, we usually you look at a flattened version and that is what some people do for the brain as well. Oh yes. Um, and in, in the, in the HEP, we currently support a, a range of, uh, of, of coordinate spaces. Trick already uh, said it. It's the, um, the Elmhouse, the, the Waxholm Red, and, uh, and different uh, reference spaces for the human brain. Um, before we look into the tools, let me just give you a, a little idea of, of the parcellations that we uh, use in the human brain because it's a bit different. Maybe for some of you that is, uh, that is something well known, for others maybe not. So um, in the human brain we have this particular, maybe I, I just turn the slides around, we have this particular uh, um, situation that uh, the, the, the brain is highly folded and highly different in different individuals. So if you take brains of 10 different humans and you map uh, 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 in this case the, the visual areas, the primary and secondary visual areas, you would see that the location of these areas is very, very different in the different brains. So uh, here we have this problem that it is very, very difficult to give a good explanation in a reference space because it might be very different in, in the individual subjects. And that is something we do uh, in Uli for many decades and which is the basis for the cytoarchitectonic probabilistic atlas that we um, uh, support in the Human Brain Project. So here um, we typically have one a scientist or often it's a PhD student delineating a single area in the human brain and they do it in histological sections uh, where we uh, at, at the one micron resolution where we actually try to find the differences in the, in the lamina uh, patterns of, of the cell distributions. And what they will do is they take, they take a histological, like a few hundred or, or, or less, a little less than hundred histological sections in one brain, try to find these borders and then there's an algorithm that can confirm, a computer program that can confirm that there is really a, a significant border, so it's not arbitrary. And they will do it in, in, in many sections in one brain, but then in 10 different brains. Um, so that we really capture a, a, a little bit of the variability in, in the human brain. And then these maps will, uh, these 2D delineations, are projected into a three-dimensional, common three-dimensional space uh, where we can then compute a probability map, which basically shows us, as you can see here on the right, in red would basically mean these voxels uh, ha have been assigned to this area in, uh, in 10 of 10 brains. And if you see here a blue color, so a low probability, it means at, at, at this position we have, we have uh, delineated this area only in, in maybe in one of these 10 brains. So it captures an, a coarse estimate of the, of the probability of the variability uh, that, that this area has in this particular brain. And then we provide these probability maps in a reference space. They're currently provided in two reference spaces in the, in the MNI Colin 27 space. This is a single subject space where you really see very precise the, the, um, 
um, the folding patterns, the gyri and sulci of, of, the, of this brain, and also in the MNI 152 space, which is an average across uh, uh, multiple subjects. The second uh, uh, human template that we provide is the so-called big brain. Um, this is a very different thing. It's a single subject template. And here we have uh, actually taken all the histological sections of one particular human brain, which is 7,400 sections, and reconstructed them back into a consistent 3D representation at a resolution of 20 micron. Uh, so at a very high resolution. So this is a, a template space where you, can, where you have only one brain, but you can really zoom into 20 micron resolution and, and see the different laminar layers in the brain. So it has a very high resolution. And the strategy is that uh, in, we provide in this, in the big brain, we provide also maps of the same site to architectonic areas, but referring to this one particular brain. So you have basically have a link from, from the uh, high resolution maps in this microscopic space uh, uh, to the probabilistic maps in a, a more in the millimeter resolution, which capture the variability. So you have a choice to basically see the variability or to go into very high detail for this one single subject. And um, as, as you will see later, uh, a strategy is that we actually um, collect and anchor multimodal data that has a high resolution and a, and a high, high spatial resolution in this space. So if, if we really, for, um, uh, for anchoring data, if we really need the resolution that distinguishes different cortical layers and so on, we, we will use this space as a reference space, and if we, uh, if we have signals uh, at, the, at the whole brain level or, or, or very low resolution signals, it can be done at the, at the millimeter resolution with the, uh, with the probabilistic atlas. And so we have a link between the two. So that one has also like MRI associated with the same exact brain and everything? There is an MRI for this. So this, this has been published in 2013, this brain. There is an MRI, but the MRI is not of very good quality. So we, in, the, in the atlas, we don't have the MRI of, of this volume. It's really a 3D representation of this, of this um, um, histology reconstruction. But it's, and, and, and this is, um, this is not, the, the big brain is not a product of the HPP. It's, it has been done with, between Ulich and, and the lab of Alan Evans in, uh, in Montreal. And it's available free for download. The way we support it here is that you have it in, in the viewer and then we do anchoring of lots of data that we provide through the Human Brain Project in this space. And there are low resolution versions at the MRI scale. So there is actually a link uh, to the lower resolution scale so you get, you can, Enter, enter it, you know, through the MRI resolution level. But there is no high quality MRI available for this one. Um, well, the quality is not, is not so good. So th this is actually already a, a picture of the, f of the viewer that we have, where you uh, zoomed into the, uh, into the big brain, and you can see that this goes uh, close to the, to the resolution of single cells. Not exactly, you do not see the morphology of single cells, but it's, it comes close. Um, and with this big brain, we provide uh, a first set of cytoarchitectonic maps in 3D. Some of them are very, very high detail. They have been computed using uh, machine learning uh, algorithms with, with supervision. Uh, some of them are interpolated and not so high detail, and this is now iteratively filled up. We also have uh, maps of the cortical layers, as you can see on the right. And if you, uh, if you look at this in the browser, we will do it later on you can really see it's, you really have a resolution in the, in the cortex, in the different layers, and, 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 and can uh, really nicely see the, uh, the architecture. Here, are, here is a map of the, uh, of the cytoarchitectonic areas, and you can see nicely here, this is the border between the uh, primary and secondary visual cortex. You can see how the arrangement of the cells and the layers is changing here, and the 3D map is actually confirming this. It's, that, that's where you find the map. Um, so then we have this, this online viewer which develops piece by piece and it allows to browse all these, uh, uh, all these brain templates. It's, this is just a little move and you can see how, how it's, it allows to zoom in to the high resolution in the big brain. You can do oblique slicing, so you can get arbitrary angle uh, um, sections. You can select the different parcellations. You can choose another template. This is the probabilistic cytoarchitectonic atlas. And then you can browse the region hierarchy, find brain regions. If you double click them, it takes you to the region. Um, and it allows you then from there 
but also to search for data that is linked to this area. So in this case, you see here in the movie, you can find uh, uh, samples of receptor density measurements in, in this area just by visually browsing the 3D volume and looking, looking at the areas. This is something we will, we will do together during the day. There's a map of, of fiber bundles uh, being developed. And here's just, uh, just the same thing in, uh, in slow. So basically, when you enter an atlas, you, you find a region hierarchy on the, on the top right. And it's, uh, if you, 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 can, uh, you can type, then start typing the name of an area. It, 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 will, it will reduce to, to all the text matches of this area. So it's quite, quite easy to navigate. You double click, you get there. And then if you, if you right click, you, it, it, it is doing a query to the database of data sets that we have in the Human Brain Project, which have been linked to this area. And this actually relies on the work of the curation teams that Camilla has, has outlined. So it's, uh, you wouldn't find anything if there wouldn't be a curation team basically uh, making sure that there's the metadata that links uh, this uh, p data set to this region. And then from there, you can actually like, like in, this, in this example, you, for example, um, I have the, again the, the primary visual uh, area. I will see here that there is also a map of that area in, uh, in the big brain at high resolution. And I can click on it. It will take me to the knowledge graph, which is the database with all the data sets. We will also look at that later with all the information you know, of the, about this data set. So there is a long description, there is a DOI, there is a publication, uh, you find a license how we, uh, under which you can use that data set, you find the files and related publications, and you also find the link that takes you into the Atlas viewer. So it's cross-connected. You get from, from the viewer, you can go into, the, um, into, into this database with all the rich information and back. In this case, if I go back, because this data set uh, is a map that has been mapped in the high resolution big brain space, I would automatically get back into this other space. So I would now see the same area mapped in the big brain. And just, just to conclude before we play with it, so in principle, um, browsing atlases in the viewer is the same thing as searching data sets uh, in, uh, uh, in the text search in the Human Brain Project, similar as you, as you would have it in, in Google. So you, you might search for restaurants in, uh, uh, in Warsaw, and you, can, and you will get a text list of these restaurants, but you can also switch to, to Google Maps, and, and you, will get, you will get that same restaurants in the, in the, in the area pinned to, the, to, these, to these locations. So it's, it's the same, same effect. But let's, let's get our hands on it. And, and the idea was that we start with the, with the rodent brain. So I think there were some, uh, some instructions uh, distributed before the course um, already um, that, that you should have a, a recent version of, of Firefox or Chrome on your computer to, uh, to run these exercises. So if you, maybe Tricky, you want to take over at that, at that point? Yeah, well, I could comment it. So the idea is that uh, we use now the Atlas viewer to look up the rock brain Atlas and to you know, basically explore the hippocampus. I don't know how many of you are well known with the anatomy of the hippocampus or able to find the boundaries of the subregions there. But uh, the idea was to say, well, the hippocampus is a very distinct structure in the brain. This has this sausage shape, it's curved. Uh, and it is considered to be quite complex. So it has very many different layers and subregions that can be difficult to identify. And the use of an atlas is, uh, is very important to, to find that properly. And of course, the hippocampus can also be challenging to navigate in if you have uh, orientations of section or images that, that is not standard. Uh, the, the shape in the human uh, resembles, of course, the, the seahorse, hence the name hippocampus. You also have the corneal ammonis, the CA fields, kind of resembling this curved shape of Ammon's horn. So, I think that if you move to the next slide, Prima, the, the task was to go to the HPP uh, viewer. There is a link here where you can also enter it through the Human Brain Project website and then go to Explore Atlases. 
launch the viewer that Timo just demonstra demonstrated, and then select the Voxon Space Rat Brain Atlas with delineations, and try to use this to simply find the dentate gyrus and its boundary with the CA3 field, and then try to use the, the, the potential of the viewer to cut through this region in 3D, to just look at how its, how its shape changes as you change the angle of the viewer. And then after that, we will have a similar type of exercise with the human brain. Yeah. Just try it out, maybe quick, uh, quick instructions. So you move, you move the, uh, the images by simply clicking and dragging. Um, and it, if you uh, hold shift and then click and drag, you will, you will get uh, oblique slices. So you will basically rotate by shift, click and drag. And zooming is simply with a scroll wheel. It should be, it should be intuitive. And, if, and there is also the big brain uh, um, available. And we just suggest that you, uh, you try to find the, the primary motor cortex in the human as a, as a second exercise. And if you, if you find it in the big brain, it is, it is interesting to see if you can spot some of the giant bead cells which you have in the, in the motor cortex. It takes a moment. And in the search list, you should, among other entries, find the probabilistic maps. So here in that case is the probabilistic map. And you see a little eye which allows you actually to, to, pre, to see the probabilistic map. So if I hit this little eye, it will show me the probabilistic map. And it will, at that moment, remove the rest of the atlas because it's... Uh, so, you see, so you see a huge difference, you know. This is really the, the probabilistic map. And if I disable it again, you see this, how the same area in the, in the maximum probability map is, is much uh, more restricted. So, so the, the real rich information is, is in the probability maps. And I, I, just, I just accessed this by, by right-clicking and, and searching for related data sets. And if, if you are uh, interested to see what, what this probabilistic map is about, you can just click on the name of this data set and it takes you to the, to the knowledge graph page with, with the descriptions. Yeah, so you can just click on any field which immediately... Yeah. yeah. And then for the... Uh, uh, for the the second task, so if you just select here the big brain, and you just zoom in with the scroll wheel or on, on a Mac touchpad with two fingers, um, it just takes you to the high resolution. Actually, I think I'm already here in the motor cortex. How did you get to that? So you switched.